some reason there seems to be two diesel electric generators sat outside the normally quiet anatomy lab making a lot of noise. So we'll use this room today. You might just hear the old bus go past and the kids screaming, playing in the crush. Anyway, bones, skull, um, specifically the sphenoid bone today. Um, I find that the sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bones are kind of the, the hardest bones to get to grips with because they're very central in the skull. So we're going to look at the sphenoid bone, see where it is, look at the bones nearby, this very colourful skull helps with that. Look at its major features, the lumpy bumpy bits, and then we'll look at the, the foramina, the holes in the sphenoid bone, all right? The beauty of this skull is that the bones are coloured differently, but the painful bit is that it's very difficult to take apart and put back together again. Um, normal skull, this one is uh, painted to show blood vessels. We'll see why that's useful later. Now the sphenoid bone is a central bone. It's this red bone here. So it's this central bone within the skull. Um, and it's forming much of the middle cranial fossa. Sphenoid. Oid uh, comes from the word eidos, meaning shaped. Sphen, sphen, um, sphen refers to wedge. Is that Greek, I think? Maybe. Um, so this bone is wedged in the middle between the other bones. That's the idea. Now we need to look at it from a couple of perspectives. Um, it's a single bone. It's not paired like many other bones of the skull. Um, it's butterfly shaped, which is easier to see from... Ah, I know. I've got, I've got this exploded skull as well, and the sphenoid bone ooh, drops out. This is the sphenoid bone in yellow. So that's looking at its internal aspect. And can you see the butterfly? It's like a butterfly with claws. Anyway, we'll look at most of these features as we go. I would say that one of its distinguishing features or most prominent points is this depression here. And inside that depression lies the pituitary gland. So if we look at a mid-sagittal section, we see the pituitary gland here. So then this is the midline, this is all sphenoid bone here and this is the sphenoid sinus. There is a sinus or a group of sinuses within the sphenoid bone which like the sinuses in the other bones of the face may be involved in reducing weight of the bones here, changing the resonance of the voice by having these cavities, that sort of thing. So there's a sphenoid sinus and the pituitary gland key features of the sphenoid bone and may help anchor you as to where it is. First of all then, what bones are nearby? Well if this is the sphenoid here in red, this big blue bone here is the occipital bone forming the back of the head and then we've got brown bones on either side. This is the temporal bone. This is the flat part, the squamous part of the temporal bone. And in here, we've got the petrous part, the rocky part of the temporal bone. Um, anteriorly, now unfortunately, while the sphenoid bone is red, the palatine bones here, forming the posterior part of the hard palate, are also red. So that's not sphenoid. These are the palatine bones. But the sphenoid then butts up against the palatine bones there. Now, if we look inside the orbit, and we've looked at the bones of the orbit before, you can see the sphenoid bone forming part of the orbit. So you can see the posterior parts of the orbit there, and you can see some of the, the holes back there. So it's also butting up against the frontal bone in this mustard yellow here. Um, it's butting up against, here's sphenoid here again, if we look laterally, up against the zygoma, or the zygomatic bones laterally. Um, and it's also butting up against the ethmoid bone, which we can just about see here inside the orbit. Uh, and then in purple, we've got the maxilla 
Um, so it's also pushing up against the maxilla. So the sphenoid bone is a very central bone. Oh look, it's even pushing up against the parietal bones here. It's, it's, it's connecting to pretty much every bone of the skull. It's that central. We can even see Voma here in orange um, butting up against the sphenoid bone. That's how central it is. The largest features of the sphenoid bone are the greater wings and the lesser wings. So the, the greater wing is extending out here, whereas the lesser wing is forming this bit here. So the greater wing is the bit that looks like the butterfly. So if we, that's the sphenoid bone removed from there in the same orientation. So you see how this whole piece out here, this wing shaped bit, funny enough, this, this is the greater wing and then this bit up here would be the lesser wing. Funnily enough, these pterygoid plates here, the word terry refers to wing as well. So there's wing all over the place. Anyway, let's stick to this side for a moment. So greater wing, lesser wing, and then as we flip this over, we see these pterygoid plates, uh, which are shaped to allow a whole number of attachments of, of bits and bobs. Uh, uh, pterygoid plates on either side, so then we have a lateral pterygoid plate and a, a medial pterygoid plate. So again, a wing-shaped structures. So the sphenoid bone is covered in wings. Um, if I put it back in situ, so you see our orientation going like this. So where the pituitary gland sits in this bony depression, um, which develops alongside the pituitary gland embryologically, that's the hypophyseal fossa. Hypophyseal referring to um, the pituitary gland, hypo, phys uh, physis growth, so a down growth from the brain, which actually isn't the whole story for the pituitary, pituitary gland, but that's why it gets named as such. The, hypo the hypophyseal fossa, the whole thing also gets called the cella tersica, the Turkish saddle, so kind of a wraparound saddle that you sit in. Uh, and then it has a whole bunch of names relative to that. Um, it has the dorsum celli, dorsum, dorsal, Back. This is the back part of the, of the cellar, of the saddle. Anteriorly, we have the tuberculum celli, the tubercle of the saddle. Imagine the, the horny bit you might hold on to if you... The Turkish saddles have that, Western saddles have that, don't... Anyway, um, so the tuberculum celli here. But do you see these, these little lumpy bits? There are one, two, three, four um, sticky outy bits, lumpy bits here, around the hypophyseal fossa or around the cella tersica. These are the clinoid processes. Um, clinoid bedpost. So this is like a four-poster bed. There are four bedposts around the hypophyseal fossa. So then you have two anterior clinoid processes and two posterior clinoid processes. Um, now the cool thing here, and the reason I use this skull, is because of that you see that red shading there? This is where the internal carotid artery runs. So it runs in a groove here. There's a groove made by the artery, the artery and the bone form together. And then this anterior clinoid process is forming a curve shape. And that curve shape is wrapping around the internal carotid artery as it ends here and continues as the middle cerebral artery and branches the anterior cerebral artery off anteriorly cool her and of course this is a really key location because we're right next to the optic canal and the superior orbital fissure loads of structures running through here to get to the orbit so from lumpy bumpy bits then to foramina now i would say that the optic canal is probably the most obvious so the optic canal runs through the sphenoid bone and we can see that on the on the colored skull at the posterior part of the orbit we can see the optic canal that the optic nerve is running through is within the sphenoid bone so it's got a bit of height to it as well as forming the wings right um, optic canal and right next to the optic canal we have the superior orbital fissure so the superior orbital fissure 
which is carrying a huge number of structures from the middle cranial fossa to the orbit is also part of the sphenoid bone. So that's the, the shape that the internal carotid artery makes running in the carotid groove, which is part of the, the sphenoid bone. Not the carotid canal, that's, that's another bone. But can you see how if I remove the internal carotid artery, we can see this foramen here. Now this is foramen lacerum. Now the clue here is that the foramen lacerum is covered by the internal carotid artery. So in life, foramen lacerum is actually a joint. It's actually two bones, the sphenoid bone and the temporal bone, linked together by cartilage. And there aren't really many things going through it, little tiny emissary veins and stuff, but the, the foramen lacerum is not a real foramen. We've just got the bone here, we've lost, lost the other tissues, so it looks like a hole, but it's not really. But foramen lacerum is part of the sphenoid bone. Oh, it's, yeah. But we can see three other foramina in the middle cranial fossa running through the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Um, so if the, if the optic canal is there, then this hole closest to it is foramen rotundum uh, and the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, passes through there to get into the maxillary region. So foramen rotundum and then we've got these two next to each other which make a little bit of a constellation. We have this oval foramen or foramen ovale and foramen spinosum next to it those are both holes within the greater wing of the sphenoid bone as well and they're dropping structures down into the the deep face down here so through foramen spinosum you get the middle meningeal artery the middle meningeal vein that's why we're seeing this this red paint on this skull and then through foramen ovale another branch of the trigeminal nerve drops through there the mandibular branch the third branch of the trigeminal nerve drops through foramen ovale uh, okay, and that's it. Those are the major and most important parts, features, foramina of the sphenoid bone and the other bones nearby. Hopefully you've got a better sense of, of where the sphenoid bone sits in the skull now, if you add that on top of all the other things you've been learning about the skull. But there is no substitute for sitting down with a skull and looking at all of these things. It's, you know, it's a three-dimensional thing. Good luck. Um, Ethmoid bone next, maybe. See you guys next week. <laughs>